to here go back to my channel so for today's video i'm going to be talking about a couple of things that uh brands don't necessarily want us consumers to know about i wouldn't say they're secrets per se but uh, definitely brands are not blasting these through newsletters let's put it that way but i definitely do think these are a couple of things to be you know good to be aware of as you're in your skincare journey in this industry so let's first start off with something that i'm pretty sure most people are aware of let's start off with an easy one and it's the fact that essences and lotions are basically serums and creams with more water so basically in k-beauty essences are just lighter and watery versions of serums that have more water concentration and they're used to add that extra layer of hydration before you go in with the serum and these two categories play a very similar role in our routine same goes with lotions and creams lotions are basically more lightweight versions of creams it has higher content of water whereas with the creams it has a higher content of oil Oils. And they both also have very similar roles in their skincare routine as they help to hydrate and moisturize our skin. In most cases that because brands, they need to profit more, they need to sell more, right? So what they do is they create all of these different skincare categories. They create essences, toners, essence and toners, essence and lotions, emollients, lotions, eye creams, creams, etc, etc. There's so many and we all know that these skincare categories aren't even official they're not regulated by the government it's just categories that brands have made so that they can add another product on the shelf to sell to us this especially occurs when one product becomes a bestseller brands realize that people will buy other products related to that bestseller because of the halo effect so what happens is that brands start making all of these different categories in the same line surrounding that hero product and of course brands will make tweaks here and there in the ingredient list and also the formulation according to what skincare category they're gonna make but most of the times it's just water added however one thing very very interesting is that i've noticed that these certain categories have indeed found their place on earth in terms of their usages for example the majority of makeup artists love using emollients and lotions to put on their clients instead of creams because creams will peel under makeup they can create lotion burgers and it can create a mess of things so i've noticed that i haven't actually encountered a makeup artist myself who used a cream they all use lotions they all use emollients and same thing goes for essence i've noticed a lot of makeup artists likewise they like to do those diy sheet masks using essences and place them on their clients to help them prep their skin and so i'm not saying that these categories are complete useless i think they have finally found their calling and they are actually useful at times also i've known this fact for a very long time the fact that essences and lotions are just serums and creams with water in them but but does that prevent me from using essences and mist? Uh, hells no. You guys know I love using my essences. I love using mist. As a matter of fact, I am using this one anyways. That, that's for another video. And so I have nothing against essences personally, but do not feel that you need to have an essence or a lotion or emulsion in your skincare routine because it's not necessary. As a matter of fact, in a very good solid skincare routine, all you need is a nice hydrating cream, SPF, and a cleanser, and you're good to go. So please don't feel the necessity to go and buy an essence because you have to because you don't moving on to something i think less people are, are aware of and i want to talk about these clinical studies or surveys or results like test results so a lot of the times in ads and marketing what we see is that when a brand is releasing a new cream or a new product a skincare product what we see is that they are they are also promoting a new star key ingredient whether that be a fermented ingredient or a new special extract from a exotic plant, whatever it may be. And what happens is that brands will present these case results or experiment results or survey results where participants claim to see like a 200% improvement in the moisture level or this cream has helped 98% of the participants with improvement in their skin texture which all sound amazing and very enticing however when taking a closer look at these studies you'll see that these studies or results barely tell us anything about the product itself and here's why let me break it down for you guys chica, chica. in order to test the efficacy of a certain product or ingredient you need to have a control which means that in order to see if this 
key star ingredient actually does work, you need to compare the test results with an experiment that just uses a plain cream without that star key ingredient. This way, by comparing the results of these two conditions, you will be able to see if indeed the star key ingredient actually makes a difference on our skin. If you don't have a control like this, you don't know if that 200% increase in the moisture level was caused by this star ingredient or it could have been just due to the fact that people used a cream at all and they could have gotten the same exact result using another different, any other different cream. To take it one step further, a good controlled experiment that demonstrates the efficacy of an ingredient consists of three different sets of experiments. One where the participant doesn't apply any product at all, one where the participant applies a regular cream with no star ingredient, and the last one where the participant applies a cream with the star ingredient. The participants would have to apply the same amount of cream day and night at the same time by the same method of application. So you want to control every single aspect of the situation that might induce differences in the results. If you truly want to see if this key ingredient, the star ingredient actually does what it's claimed it does by the brand. Then what you do is you compare the moisture level of these three different sets of experiments. And if the results from the third test or the experiment does show a significant amount of difference in the moisture level, then yes, we can say that, wow, the star ingredient or this cream can actually make a difference on our skin. However, in a lot of marketing that a lot of skincare brands do nowadays, they don't have a control and instead what they do is that they make participants use the product for a certain period of time and they make them record you know how it felt how their skin felt before and after using the cream and that's why you see results such as oh my I don't know texture improved 98% after using this cream which isn't entirely untrue. I'm not saying brands are lying about these results, but I'm saying that these results don't really tell us anything about the product itself. Once again, people could have gotten the exact same result using a total different cream. And that kind of defeats the whole purpose of marketing the special key ingredient because honestly, you're not telling us anything about it. Now I realize brands do this because it has always been the way of marketing. People have done it for years and years, everyone does it. And so I think for, on, the, on some levels, I don't think people are even aware that this type of experiment or survey taking is wrong. And I also understand why people do it. I understand why brands do it because we as consumers, we want to see some results. We want to see stats. We want to see tangible results that this product is indeed worth my money and it's worth my time and it's worth, you know, buying. And so rather than just saying this cream is great, it looks more professional and more persuasive if you have some kind of statistics on the website. And so I do understand why brands do it, but honestly, it doesn't impress me too much. What does impress me is when brands actually do these three sets of experiments or at least they have a control and the only cases I've only seen a couple of cases and SK2 was actually a brand that did carry out these three sets of experiments and recently I saw Innisfree do a controlled experiment where they carried out an experiment to see the efficacy of a liposome ingredient and they had a control where they compared it with a case where there was no liposome technology going on so I thought that was very very impressive of them and that made me more appreciative of these skincare brands and so I do think a lot of more bigger corporates are doing it but for the most part it's still just like a survey like a before and after which like I said a million times doesn't really tell us much about the product what I've actually seen more with a lot of marketings with these brands is that they test out their product with a product from another brand. So they might be like of the same line or they might be using the same key ingredient like vitamin C. And what a lot of brands have done is that they'll make claims that, oh, our product did so much better than, you know, other brands' vitamin C product. And honestly, likewise, this doesn't really tell much tell me much about your product either. Like if you want your results to be perceived as valid and reliable, then the process of you doing the experience also has to be controlled. Last but not least, I'm going to be talking about ingredients. So I'm not saying all, but sometimes those ingredients, those star ingredients that brands are pushing as part of the marketing, 
sometimes the amount they put in to the product is so little that it would have no difference whatsoever once you apply it onto your skin. And they put in amounts as small as like 0.001% or 0.02% you know, and it won't make any difference on our skin. But brands do it because they know that consumers, we like to look at the ingredient list. And by adding all of these ingredients into the ingredient list, it makes it seem like the product can offer more to the consumers than actually can and so a lot of times on the website you'll see all of these enticing explanations about the ingredients and what it can do and what it can offer for our skin however that doesn't necessarily mean that the product will give us that effect and a lot of times you'll see that there are little asterisks saying that the explanation only pertains to the raw ingredients and of course they put it in small letters making us think that the product will give us the same effects that the ingredient does that's why i really appreciate it when brands reveal how much percentage of actives or certain ingredients they put into the product and also i like to concentrate on the top few ingredients because they're bound to have higher amount of percentages and thus they act as a better indicator of what this product can offer as opposed to the ingredients that the brand is marketing and a lot of times not always there is a discrepancy so a lot of the star ingredients like these fabulous flashy ingredients you'll see like at the bottom of the ingredient list and that's when i'm kind of disappointed the time that i do get excited is when the top of the ingredient list and and the star ingredients that's being marketed do match. That's when I'm like, oh, I'm very, very impressed. Also, at this point, you might be asking, Sue, then how do I know a product will do what it supposedly claims it does? Every country is different, but in Korea, regulated by the laws, there are only four different types of claims that brands make about their products in terms of the product's efficacy and actual performance. They can claim that the skincare product can, one, help with wrinkles, second, help with bright third help with wrinkle and brightening and fourth help with acne and the brands can only use these claims if they follow the set of guidelines that the government has set forth and also use ingredients that the government has approved of and these claims are usually found on the packaging bottle or you can find them on the product itself so i have a product here that says 주름 개선 and 미백 이중 기능성 화장품 which means that yes indeed this skincare product has been made following the guidelines in using the ingredients that the government has proved up in terms of seeing improvements in wrinkles and brightening brightening so for brightening let's take an example the government has allowed this list this set of ingredients to be used when creating a brightening product and the ingredient is niacinamide ascorbic glucoside arbutin alpha bisabolol i have no idea how to pronounce that ingredient <laughs> ethyl ascorbic ether 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 yeah oil soluble licorice extract and all of this information is available for the public to see they have it all listed on the website and they also have guidelines in how to actually use this ingredient to make the product it's very very detailed so when i look at a product and i want to know what i can expect from it not only do i look at the top of the ingredient list but i also make sure to check out these claims if they do have these claims written on the products just so that i know what to expect all right guys that was it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it and i hope it was easy for you to understand i think one of my roles in the youtube community is taking like really complex information and just really simplify it so that anyone can understand and just you know understand it breezily make sure to like this video and also let me know if you guys want to see a part two in the comments down below because i really really want to delve into the categories or the topics such as ewg clean beauty and the phrases dermatology tested so yeah guys make sure to give this video a like and i'll see you guys in my next ciao